Hello, this is Stephen Nojiri, and this is another Tata Genji Tradition video. This video, which will be the final video of 2022, will close this year out by discussing some of the higher material from the Kusunoki tradition. Now, of course, this is a Tata Genji channel, but we talk about Kusunoki Masashige and his Kusunoki Ryu a lot because Masashige was a student of Genji tactics, Tata Genji and Oe Genji, and as such is part of the Tata Genji tradition. Also remember that many Tata Genji were also part of the Southern Court and the Second Southern Court, and also practiced Kusunoki Ryu once Kusunoki Ryu was developed. So the Tata Genji tradition, the Southern Court, Second Southern Court, Kusunoki Ryu, it basically a continuous feedback loop. So you're essentially looking at either the same teachings or interrelated teachings generationally feedbacking upon itself. Now, in this video, we will discuss the spiritual aspects brought up in the Kusunoki family tradition. And this video will not go into extreme depth, but it's going to attempt to give a decent overview of some of the main ideas. And I'll explain why we're doing this at the end of the video. In an overview, Kusunoki is a Shingon Buddhist, but this also encompasses a level of Shinto belief as well. Uh, because, as you, many of you viewers know, the synthesis of Buddhism in Shinto is well developed in the early 1300s. Now, we can de definitely say that his religion is confirmed by historical data. Also, the temple that he attended, actually the temple that his entire family uh, attended, the Kusunoki family temple, still exists and is still operational to this day. Uh, it contains a lot of of the Kusunoki family documents. Actually, it, it contains not just Kusunoki family documents, but a lot of documents from just the area around Kawachi. Um, it also has an amazing Avalokiteshvara of the wheel statue and a Big Dipper's uh, star constellation mound. And in keeping with that, we can also pretty much make a solid theory that Avalokiteshvara of the wheel was Kusunoki's personal deity. And a personal deity means that's when an esoteric Buddhist takes a particular Buddhist deity as their main focus. A very common term that you'll hear in the modern dimes uses the Tibetan Yidam. So if you're, fam if you're at all familiar with esoteric Buddhism and, you're f and you've heard the word Yidam, then, uh, then you'll know what we mean by personal deity. Um, but we can say that uh, we can theorize pretty solidly that Avalokiteshvara of the wheel, which is a, mul which is a blue multi-armed form of Avalokiteshvara, uh, is the deity of Kusunoki from the fact that the Avalokitesh water of the wheel is the deity of the family temple. So the Kusunoki family temple's deity is Avalokitesh water of the wheel. And we also have information taken from written sources. So we also know that Kusunoki mentions Avalokitesh water several times in the, in the, in the, in, I said in the Kudin, in the Kadin, within the, uh, within the Kusunoki Kadin. Avalokiteshvara Kiteshwara is mentioned many times. And also the Taiheiki uh, mentions Kusunoki's deep devotion and faith in Avalokiteshvara. There's a there's a whole event with an arrow being stopped by an Avalokiteshvara amulet. So anyway, the point of saying this is I just want to kind of give you the, this, let you know that Kusunoki is a very religious person, but he's also a very rational, logical person as well. And, you know, for some of the viewers, there's... Uh, there's an issue with being religious or being scientifically minded. A lot of people, some people understand you can be both, but a lot of people feel like you have to be one or the other. And so that's basically the point of this video is to show you how Kutsunoki is both. So, and you have to understand how this actually works within his mindset. Otherwise, uh, all of the following slides or all of the future videos, which I will just read translations of what of his writings, uh, will be confusing. So let's cut straight to the point. Kusunoki is both deeply religious and very critical or analytically minded. And this is because, according to Kusunoki, and thus the Kusunoki Ryu teachings, and also in step with the Jingunden, the key point is that everything is an expression of the primordial enlightened mind, aka there is no division between science and divinity. There is no Cartesian divide in this system. Now. Interestingly enough, as I explain the system, some of you may see parallels with, with a sort of uh, Cartesian philosophy, but strictly to the point, 
that there is not this divide that the spiritual is one intrinsically isolated thing and that the material is one intrinsically isolated thing and that the two are intrinsically isolated from each other. That Cartesian divide does not exist in Kusunoki's mind. So again, not discussing the entirety of Descartian philosophy because there are some places where you know some of the Descartian ideas line up with some of the Kusunoki ideas. But what we're focusing specifically on is the fact that the, of the Cartesian divide, that way of viewing the world that has become endemic to the Western world. And that is this concept that there's a fundamental, unbridgeable divide between the mind and the material world. That divide does not exist in Buddhism, and it does not exist in the Jingunden, and it does not exist for Kusunoki. What in the within the Kuso we can talk about within Buddhism, within Jingunden, within Kusunoki, what exists is a primordial reality, the Buddha nature, and the relative world. This is where you get yin yang, atoms, chemical compounds, psychology, etc., etc. So you have the ultimate, which is enlightenment, and then you have the relative, which is everything that we come to know, both spiritually and physically and psychologically. So within this view, you know, the world is made up of atoms, but the atoms are born from divine energies, etc., etc., etc. So there's it's a it's a spectrum not a division so let me be completely blunt and honest a proper dive into this would take hours hours upon hours so let's get back to the main point which is of the video which is only supposed to be an overview of the belief so that when future videos come out they they make more sense so kusunoki believes that all things are a form of the divine and that the divine is a form of Buddha nature, meaning that primordially there is Buddha nature, and then there is divinity, which then also contains the material world. So we have three levels of divinity. We have the Buddha nature, then we have yin-yang elements, gods, then we have physics and psychology. So it's very important to remember though Number three, which is physics and psychology, is not a separate reality from number one and two. It's an extension. There's not a Cartesian divide. This means that psychology isn't seen as something in competition with religion. It is an extension. The human mind is a divine thing. Thus, what Western people call psychology is understood as religion by Kusunoki. Thus, the great liberation in two phases, which is, quote-unquote, psychological warfare, is seen as a divine method by Kusunoki. Using psychological methods to defeat your enemy is seen as a divine way of the gods. The principle that, quote-unquote, conspiracy is the way of the gods, is a principle that underlines all kusunoki ryu, the southern court traditions, and much of the Tata Genji ideas as well. This same concept applies to science and physics and even day-to-day -day interactions. For example, Kusunoki has a teaching called Breaking Miracles. Well, actually, Breaking Miracles is kind of the shorthand name. The, 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 um, when you actually get into the text and it goes over the full teaching, the full teaching is actually called Subduing Demonic Activity. But, and it, it's a story about how a young Kusunoki is investigating a wandering Shigendo priest, and that priest claims to be able to divine information from people for a fee. And Kusunoki ends up finding out that the Shigendo priest actually just has spies set up all around the town, gathering data and passing the data on to the priest. So it's a scam. And Kusunoki exposes this plot. And so this is a story that's told in, in the teaching called Breaking Miracles or in the full or sort of doing demonic activity. And the idea is, you know, is false miracles are lies. That is demonic activity. It goes into this whole thing. And there's no division between like, uh, you know, social truth versus sort of religious virtue. And uh, the, the point. So anyway, let's move on to the next slide. So, 
so this is not only an example of these sort of deep religious principles being applied in just normal everyday settings which is very common you'll see this in future videos about how there'll be this very very esoteric principle but then it can be applied in a very like right into the normal mundane world and the reason that the esoteric principle can be applied into the mundane world is because the mundane world is an extension or a projection of the of the profound but another thing that this brings us to is the Jin Gundin teaches, or the Jin Gundin, the Southern Core tradition, the Kusunoki tradition, all being in the same feedback loop, teaches that honesty and truth is one of the most highest principles of all. Truth is divine. Truth is divinity. Truth is an amazingly beautiful thing. Therefore, one must destroy fake miracles. What destroying fake miracles also is called subduing demonic activity, because it because the because fake miracles are a lie they corrupt the the beauty of the divine they are not truth and so since truth is divine truth is the way of the gods uh, one has to destroy false miracles now this doesn't mean that Kusunoki teaches that all miracles are faked in fact it's quite the opposite within the section he teaches about this fake miracle but then he discuss a real miracle that he encountered and upon investigating there was no solution for it, it just it was an actual miracle but as I said the miracle must be tested if it's disproven then good because it wasn't true but if the miracle holds up then it's okay to accept it as a miracle but the great irony in that is that even an appearance of a true miracle is still considered just another worldly thing. Moving on, let's briefly bring up external gods and external worlds. Now this one may be tough for a lot of the viewers to understand because it involves a need. You really got to understand esoteric Buddhist views. However, I'm going to attempt to summarize it and it will be a brief summary and then we got to move on. But the idea is that external gods and external heavens and hells is a lower idea. The deities in the Pure Lands reside as an extension of your own mind, an extension of Buddhahood. When you're not enlightened, you experience external gods and external Pure Lands and external heavens, hells, things like and external worlds. When you are enlightened, they are a display of your wisdom. So let's dive into that just a little bit more. So to be clear, fundamentally, until one has reached Buddhahood, one must traverse the three levels of experience. However, one must also be honest about their levels. So what we've got here is we have a teachings of, you know, three levels of experience, Buddha, gods, material worlds, and then levels of realization. Where are you on this scale? in terms of what you actually perceive, what you actually operate at. But then we have to couple this with the teaching of truth. Where are you actually on that level? And so the warning is that most people, out of pride, will lie about their level and attempt to function on a level that is actually higher than what they can really handle. And this lying causes disharmony internally and socially. So, for example, someone who pretends that they perceive the divine as their own display, but really don't even perceive external divinities and have a lot of personal issues and social issues and so forth. That person is lying about their ability and they will suffer and not progress due to their lack of honesty. So, one needs to start at the actual level and aspire to grow to the next stage. So, if one is not enlightened, if one does not directly perceive their own wisdom, the own divinity of their wisdom, then, and, and they, then they can't pretend to be at that level. So then, they're not Buddha, they're not enlightened, so therefore, they, so therefore the ultimate truth is that all gods and pure lands and heavens and hells are just displays of, of the Buddha nature, but you're not actually experiencing that, then you fall into the middle or the lower level in which there does appear to be external gods and external worlds, etc., etc., etc. But the point here, the key factor here, is that the inseparability of the divine with the mind 
is also why magic works, right? So Kusunoki tradition has several spells and visualizations and rituals and mantras and mudras that influence or change the world around the user because of the non-separated nature of the mind with the divinities and the, in, and the interconnected nature of the world and the living beings contained within. So because there is not a gap between one's mind and the external physical material world this is how magic is exist interestingly enough um, even though we even though you know there's clearly no Descartian split this is one sort of similar thing with a Cartesian idea is the idea that uh, innate ideas uh, can that wisdom can uh, innate ideas can sort of arise from the mind and then give rise to deductive reasoning this idea where for example the uh, the the idea that de that innate ideas produce deductive reasoning and deductive reasoning is supplied by the divine therefore deductive reasoning can be trusted because it comes from a divine source that interestingly enough sort of uh, even that actually matches with the Kusunoki idea and it's the same sort of principle here even which is interesting because even though there's even though Cartesianism has a Cartesian divide and Kusunoki does not have a Cartesian divide they both have that same idea which is interesting this all of course is very brief and oversimplistic presentation of the system but again one needs to have a basic understanding and it's a, a basic understanding to at least comprehend Kusunoki through the the Kaden Kusunoki's entire system is founded on this view, flavored with this view. And sure, a person could choose to cherry pick out mechanical parts and try to drop the religious parts, but in doing so, the integrity of the entire system comes apart. You, the viewer, the reader, whether you're viewing these videos or whether you're reading the Kaden yourself, you would not correctly understand what's being written if you didn't understand the view from which it's being written from you would have a major misunderstanding and then that misunderstanding would become a systemic error that would only increase with each further misunderstanding so let's move into some examples Kusunoki says there is no external hell or pure land there's only your mind he doesn't mean that it's all made up fantasy what he means is that in ultimate truth in Buddhahood there is only your mind but in relative reality the realm of gods and of physics there can be all manner of experiences that we can call hell or paradise from actual hells and pure lands to just really good or really bad experiences in your normal relative life and and this mistake could be made if the reader doesn't understand the three levels so the reader has to ba have at least a basic understanding of the three levels let's jump into another uh, teaching that goes back to the to the initial teaching which I made a video on earlier so it says the highest general perceives their divine wisdom and acts upon it the middle general has faith and respect to the external deities and prohibits immoral corrupt behavior the lower or the ignorant it actually uses ignorant the ignorant general believes only in the existence of external gods and attempts to placate them or ignore them while committing actions that violate the divine principles again this doesn't just relate to religious service this is a basic framework for an entire world view let's connect this with information that I presented in a previous video where I said the superior general has Mio the wondrous ability tactics and conspiracies are made up from his own mind as needed the middle general has a solid grasp on the traditions and utilizes the tactics passed down to him occasionally altering and editing them as needed the lower general doesn't comprehend the principles well hasn't mastered passed down tactics and insists on victory through overpowering force and slaughter so you can see how the how the previous slide and this slide go together now let's move this over to some other well-known 
um, applications, such as selecting of auspicious days. So Kusanoki discusses selecting days and mentions that there are systems that have been handed down and it's okay to use them so long as it doesn't conflict or violate with the truth. Meaning, if you have solid data that you should or should not move on something, then go with the rational data and not the esoteric day selections. Right? Also remember, previous video I explained, day and direction selection is really relegated to lower sun or more appropriately the upper moon category. Principles and truth is absolutely sun category. So you could argue that principles and truth outrank divination. So for example, Kusunoki specifically says, uses this example in the, in the text. If the men and horses are tired from having traveled long roads, despite that it might be a good day for travel according to divination, you should stop, set up camp and rest. It's illogical to press forward tired men and tired horses, even if it is allegedly, quote unquote, a good luck day for, go for marching. Simply put, even though astrologically this is an auspicious day to march the horses, if the men and the horses are worn out and tired, you, you set up camp, you don't march. But again, let's be very clear, and I'm putting these things in red letters. This is not a conflict between religion and science and rational thought. There is no conflict between these two. Rational thought and science, physics, psychology, they are equally as divine as the divination of days. This also goes for, no, we can and further go, this also goes for not missing good chances due to divination. For example, in the text he says, if your enemy is weak and is in a good position to be defeated, despite whatever the divination calendar says, you should overtake them. So divination is not dismissed, it's just tempered with another divine tool, human intelligence. Yes, human intelligence is considered a divine, magical, wondrous tool. So divination is a tool, human intelligence is a tool. Both are divine tools. But again, remember div divination is upper moon, but intelligence, wisdom, principle, that's sun category. So in the Kaden, there's a section called the five divine powers. It's a really awesome section. I'm actually, I look forward to doing the videos. I'm gonna just read the translation. And uh, I really, really like the, this section. So, but the five divine powers are listed. Well, the, rather than being magical rituals or superpowers, it's actually five sets of principles. So it's called the five divine powers, and then each divine, each of the five is broken into subsections. So it's sets of principles. For example, the subsection of hearing from a thousand miles away, the divine power of hearing from a thousand miles away, is taught as having spies and scouts set up in the territory a thousand miles away. Now this isn't dismissive of ritual, religion, or magic, because remember, the intelligence of the human mind is also a divine thing. Therefore, espionage is a form of magic. Espionage is a religious activity. So we're going to bring this video to a conclusion, um, and it was a preliminary look at the Kusunoki teachings and the spiritual undertones that are inseparable from the entire system. Again, some people may be tempted to try to cherry pick out mechanical things and with that, without, but without the context of the of the view that binds the entire system together, the integrity of whatever you pull out collapses. So ideally, the viewer will have watched this video before they watch future Kusunoki videos, which are going to go into, in, into depth on these translated sections. Basically, I'm going to translate the section. I'll just read you the section, and then I'll offer commentary. And the first set of videos will be well, about the five superpowers, such as espionage is a divine thing. Good government is a divine thing. So again, things that aren't normally in the West viewed as religion or spirituality, those things are religion in the Kusunokiru. Espionage is religion. Government is religion. 
in the Kusunokiru. It's very, very intriguing. And I, I personally, I really value and really enjoy and just, all I can say is I very, very much value the Kusunoki teachings. So I'm very happy to share those in the near future. And that is it for this video. As always, um, these videos are meant to be brief and they are meant to be to inspire you or to give you a starting off point. The material in this video is copywritten by me. So please do not steal this material. Please do not take it. Please do not copy it. Again, it, I hope it inspires you. I hope that it sets you off on your own investigations and explorations.